Lab TV travels to the MIT Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts to see how engineers and scientists make semiconductors in one of the world's cleanest environments. It's a very large facility to make very small things. We make extremely small switches and circuits that will end up in cell phones, in cameras, and in computers in five to 10 years. And to make these tiny devices, they need to control everything in the lab, airflow, temperature, vibration, and especially dust. This is called a clean room. And it's called a clean room because there are very few particles in there. So clean room suits or bunny suits, they have to wear them to protect the circuits that we're making from the people. So a little piece of dust that would come off of your body uh, is about a thousand times the size of a typical circuit. And so one of them would land on this wafer while we're making it would basically destroy that entire circuit. First, they start with very pure silicon dioxide or sand, melt it down to make molten silicon and add impurities to make it semiconductive. Then they lower a thin silicon seed crystal and turn it slowly as they raise it to form one long cylindrical crystal. After it cools, it gets sliced into very thin wafers. Typically when you start making a silicon circuit, you start by burning that wafer at very high temperatures in oxygen. And that's called oxidizing the wafer to create silicon dioxide just on the surface. After that, you put down various metal layers. And that's done by plasma depositing these layers and then patterning them, much like you might have done with photography, basically projecting light onto light-sensitive resist, making patterns, and then etching them away with chemicals and other uh, processes. And then they place thousands, even millions of circuits on each wafer. Well, ultimately, you have to tell these circuits what to do. But they basically are large number of switches, kind of like switches you would have in your house. They turn lights and signals on and off. The circuits on silicon are all on that silicon layer. The little switches are all on that silicon layer. There's a whole bunch of wires, just like there's wires in your house, that connect all of those switches together. But these wires are so small that you can't see them. One of the things that we make with this facility, and using these same processes for semiconductors, are MEMS, microelectromechanical systems. They're tiny little things that actually move physically. One example is we have a device which just like a piece of paper can curl up and then curl down and do that really fast and a large number of times. It does that because there's mechanical force. You can imagine that it's like a spring up from its anchor point. And if you try to push it down, it'll pop back up. Then you can apply a voltage between the top part and the bottom part and it'll pull down onto the substrate. And then that can repeat over and over. And in fact, it could also be a shutter meaning opening and closing light. So if semiconductors are the brains in a the system, then MEMS are the hands and the eyes. They move and they can sense things. MEMS are very reliable and use almost no energy, but it's a challenge to package all those functions onto one chip. The signals keep interfering with each other. So what we did is we found a way to channel all that energy in little troughs made of metallized silicon. So we etched little channels into the silicon and then we coat it with metal. And those troughs or channels move those signals on the wafer without letting them spill over to other circuits. It allows us to put many more in a very small area without them talking to each other. And then Jeremy and his team can keep making smaller and faster chips that do even more amazing things. I like to understand the world around me. Um, I like to understand why things behave the way they do. And uh, I like discovering. I would love to see these little things that we've helped to create really being used in products and really making a difference in people's lives. To find out more about semiconductors and MEMS devices, check out labtvonline.org.